I know it's here somewhere. Finally, finally. Oh, it's time for the duck. You're listening to Dr. Bill, the computer curmudgeon. Ah, oh, take it away, doctor. Well, it's that time again, and the doctor is in. It's time once again for Dr. Bill, the computer curmudgeon. Ha! Ah. And I'm going to zoom in just a little bit tighter. <laughs> You're like, what? Could you have done that before the show started? No, because I didn't see that it was a problem until just then. So there you go. That's the way we are here on the Dr. Bill Show. We just are random. Off the wall, even. By the way, we are proud members of the Tech Podcast Network, techpodcast.com. If it's tech, it's right here on Dr. Bill the Computer Curmudgeon. You know what? I need a haircut. Yep, sure do. But I'm not going to get one right now because i got a show to do. Ha! <laughs> yes. So, uh, I said we were proud members of the Tech Podcast Network. Already did that. But we are also proud members of the International Association of Internet Broadcasters. Ha, ha, ha. Yes, I like doing that, just because, again, it's random. Anyway, we didn't have a show last week, as you probably already know. Those of you that were looking for a show going, where'd the show go? Well, it wasn't. <laughs> I had I was on vacation all last week, which was actually a working vacation. I was, I was at a convention down in uh, Branson, Missouri, and I was a speaker at that convention. But at any rate... I just, I've been so busy. So I decided I just can't do a show and take off and go to Branson. It was a long drive, both down there and back. <sighs> anyway, let's look at the items we have from the blog. Of course, the blog is drbill.tv. That's D-R-B-I-L-L dot TV, as it says there on the screen. Also... This week we are sponsored by Lynda.com. Lynda.com, in case you are not aware, is a system by which you can have online training videos available for you. And there's a 10-day free trial. Now, in 10 days, that's 10. In 10 days, yes, one for each finger. In 10 days, you can get a lot of training done. And it's free. And the only thing you have to do is remember the blog. DrBill.tv, D-R-B-I-L-L.tv, as it says there on that banner, right there. Go there and click on the little Lynda.com training videos thing. There on the right-hand column side of things, you will see that. You might say, what's the difference between a thing and a thing? Randomness. When it's a thing, it's because I want to say it that way. It's, that just occurs occasionally. So anyway, point is that we have stuff on the show. And I got several things to talk to you about, including the Linda.com thing, which was that you can get those training videos for free for 10 days. Try it out. Kick the tires, proverbially, as they say. Yes. All right, first item here on the blog. The aforementioned drbill.tv is Tiny Compute Stick by Intel. This is the Intel PC on a stick thing, and basically it's very cool. For $149, you can get a Windows version. It has a fully licensed version of Windows on the stick. The stick is like a USB stick looking thing. Plugs into your HDMI monitor or TV or whatever, and basically turns it into a Windows computer. That's cool. You can also, for $110, a little bit less, you get a Linux version. So you can have Linux right there running on your television. How cool is that? It's actually running on this little stick, and the processor and RAM is embedded in this gum size, pack size device. You know, like if you had a pack of gum, imagine that it was a USB stick. Well, that's about the size of it. So anyway, uh, back in CES in January, Intel showed off the compute stick. It's a version of a tiny, teeny tiny PC, as the article says here, that includes a quad core. <laughs> quad core. Atom processor, and depending on whether you want the Windows 8.1 or Linux edition, comes with either 2 gig of RAM and up to 32 gig of onboard storage. And a little bitty stick. You know, it's kind of like, like a thumb drive. I have a thumb drive here. 
in my pocket. Thumb drive. I also have a hard drive and a wallet, but that we're not going there. Thumb drive. <laughs> so imagine a stick like that that you plug into your TV and boom, you've got a computer. Awesome. Anyway, I like that idea. I think it would be fun to play with. Next time I have a hundred and some bucks to throw away, I'll, I'll probably get one, but that will be a long time. <laughs> Intel open sources Stephen Hawking's voice system. So you too can sound like Stephen Hawking. Or you could have on your phone and you could run it into your phone and you could have somebody, you could call somebody and pretend you're Stephen Hawking. <laughs> I'm not suggesting you actually do that. But anyway, it would be kind of an interesting prank, wouldn't it? I don't know. I probably should not have suggested it. Somebody will try it, I'm sure. Anyway, Intel's Lama Notchman, this guy's name, is taking he, Stephen Hawking's speech open source. He helped develop this system for Stephen Hawking so that he would be able to talk more easily since he is, you know, physically impaired, so to speak, and... This is kind of cool. I mean, like I said, it just there's too many things you might could do if you had this, but it's open source. So you can get it, run it on your computer, and sound like Stephen Hawking, I guess. Anyway, next item, cheaper glass. No, we're not talking about glass like it's in a window. We're talking about Google Glass. You know, Google Glass, they... <laughs> there are a lot of people that aren't excited about Google, Google Glass. Google, ha <laughs> ha. Google Glass. You try saying that 10 times fast. You say, Dr. Bill, you weren't saying it 10 times. No, but it only takes once. <laughs> In my mind, I was doing it 10 times. So there. Anyway, this is a story from CNET by Richard Nieva. A new version of Google Glass, the search giant's web-connected eyewear, may be here soon. Except this version is supposed to be cheaper so that ordinary folk can buy it and use it instead of paying 1400 and some dollars. Now, it doesn't say what cheaper means. I don't think we're talking a buck 95 here. Know what I mean? But cheaper in the sense that maybe somebody might actually buy one. <laughs> you knew it had to happen. Also, get your mail by drone. Now everything is drone these days. I have a drone and I like to play with it. Sometimes inside, which is a bad idea. <laughs> okay, but anyway. The thing is, can you imagine going, you, know, you hear you hear the mail has arrived and you go out and there's a drone going buzzing in front of your face, handing you the mail. That would be weird. <laughs> but at any rate, they're actually testing the first drone delivery system in Switzerland. Good old Switzerland. Yes. This is an article from TechCrunch by John Biggs. The Swiss Postal Service, Swiss Post, good name for it, by the way, is going to attempt drone deliveries for the first time ever using Matternet. Like Matterhorn, right? They're in Switzerland. What are you going to do? Anyway, Matternet, a company working on perfecting drone-based delivery systems. The first tent test will happen in Switzerland this summer as a proof of concept to clarify the legal framework, consider local conditions, and explore the technical and business capabilities of the drones. That's right, robots are about to deliver our mail. If you're in Switzerland, and if you want to get your mail from a robot drone. Yeah. Okay. Next item, farewell. Farewell, we hardly knew thee. Nexus 7. The Nexus 7 tablet has been pulled down from the Google Store. Not the Play Store, obviously, but the store whereupon you can buy physical devices. Uh, Nexus 7 devices, in this case. It has been replaced by the Nexus 9, which is, of course, 9 inches diameter screen instead of 7. And uh, this, this means, though, that other than being pulled down from the uh, Google Store, location of buying it. If there are other stores like say Amazon that have Nexus 7s, they're going to sell them, sell them cheap. Sell them cheap. 
Yes! Apparently my week off has done nothing to improve my ability to speak clearly. Yeesh! Whoa! Thank you, Fred, for the Geek Software of the Week drum roll! <laughs> Just what I needed in my present state of mind. Anyway! Yes, it was a state of mind. I didn't say it was a good one. <laughs> at any rate. So, Geek Software of the Week this week is Sind Blaster. Sind Blaster. That's because you're blasting out emails. It's an email list package tool. So if you have an email list, maybe you have an Excel spreadsheet with all of your friends in it. You can pull that into Send Blaster, and then you can send out email. Now, of course, we're not supposed to spam, folks. This is a real opt-in email thing that you may want to use, but it's a tool. And it allows you to compose really cool-looking emails and send them. There's a free version, and there's a pro version. And the pro version is $129, so it's, you know, it's a little expensive. But the free version is, of course, free. <laughs> yes, you probably figured that out. So, if all you need to do is send emails, then you might want to look into Send Blaster as a tool upon which to send those emails. Anyway, last item this week is interesting because it's talking about the screensavers. Now, back in the day, there was a network on cable called... ZDTV for Ziff Davis. ZDTV. And there was a show called The Screensavers. Now, they eventually changed the name to Tech TV, and they kept the show The Screensavers. And Screensavers, they had various co-hosts, but the main host was Leo Laporte. And Leo, of course, left uh, G4 when G4 bought Tech TV, okay, from Paul Allen. I'm getting into a lot of history here. But at any rate, Paul Allen, of course, is a, a major stakeholder in Microsoft. And so he had purchased ZDTV's network, turned it into Tech TV. And then he decided, fooey, I'm tired of this. I'm getting rid of it. So he sold it to G4, which is, on, which is Comcast, which is a bad idea. <laughs> because, of course, Comcast ruins everything they touch. So, of course, it went away. And now it's completely gone. So, the screensavers, but see, Leo, when he left, he couldn't use the term screensavers because it was still owned by G4 Comcast. And so, he had to call his new program Twit. Actually, it was called Revenge of the Screensavers, and they sent him a cease and desist letter, a very gentle, nice cease and desist letter that said, please don't use the term screensaver, even in Revenge of the Screensaver. Screen, screen savers. And so he went, oh well. So he said, let's come up with something else. So they finally decided on This Week in Tech. This Week in Tech. T-W-I-T. Twit. And so all the people who watched it were called twits. Of which I was one. You knew that, didn't you? Anyway. <laughs> so... Um, so now the Twit Network, which now has a lot of different programs, is bringing back the screensavers because G4 has dropped screensavers and they did a lot of legal checking and found out, ah, we don't care anymore. You can use the term screensavers. I mean, screensavers, come on. A screensaver is just a term, a phrase, referring to Windows computers having screensavers, right? So I don't see why it was such a big deal to start with. But, you know, when you get a cease and desist letter, you kind of you kind of tempted to just, okay, never mind, and let it go. So anyway, the new Screensavers is coming out on the Twit Network. Dude. So this last article is a little geek culture article talking about the history of the Screensavers. Basically, Leo was going to have a 10th anniversary Twit celebration show, which he had last Sunday. I'm recording this Sunday. This was last Sunday. They had this celebration, and they had all the original screensaver folks back, and he announced the new screensavers at that time. Now, the interesting thing is, this was all, you know, January to April time frame for Leo to have the 10th anniversary. 
my 10th anniversary of being on the Dr. Bill Show here is also 10 years, but it will be 10 years in June. So prepare for something big in June. <laughs> but we've been around almost as long as Twit. How weird is that? Now, I don't have, you know, tons of shows like the Twit Network has, but we do have the Dr. Bill Show, drbill.tv, the Handheld Hack, Vertzine, the, the uh, online magazine of virtualization and cloud computing, and we have the Word of Faith Netcast. All of those shows that we do, that I do personally, you know. Now, the Dr. Bill Show is the only truly weekly show that, except for last week, don't, 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 don't pay any attention to that. Okay, okay, one, we skipped one. Give me a break. But normally it's every week, all right? So anyway, this all got me to thinking about another show called Techzilla, which also kind of was the screensaver's mantle, you know, a little bit, because uh, Patrick Norton, who was on the screensavers, he was one of Leo's co-hosts, uh, he started Techzilla on Revision 3. Well, then they finally get away with Techzilla. And Patrick was like, you know, I liked Techzilla. And Shannon Morris, his co-host, she said, I liked Techzilla. And all the Techzilla fans were going, dude, I like Techzilla. So they started Tech Thing. T-E-K-T-I-T-H-I-T-H-I-N-G. Let me, Fred, just put it up on the screen. Thank you. So anyway, Tech Thing. So techthing.com, if you go there, you can view... Their new show, Tech Thing, which is a follow-up to Techzilla, which is a follow-up to the screensavers. <laughs> See what I'm saying? It gets interesting. Anyway, the point is that on Tech Thing, they have a thing where you can be a patron of the show, and you pay basically however much you want to pay per show to see the show. Now, what this does is it supports... Patrick and Shannon, the talent that's on the show, so that they can continue to make the netcast, right? So I got to thinking about this, and I thought, you know, that's what we ought to do for the Dr. Bill show, because, I mean, you know, to be honest, I'd love to go full-time, right? Where that's all I do is make shows, that I could actually get them out where they're supposed to be out, you know what I'm saying? But, even if we may not be able to do that, at least we could get in some finances to get some new tech stuff to improve the quality of the, of the uh, camera, and the lighting, and all the stuff that I normally have to shell out for myself, <laughs> right? And also be able to get in computers and technology and cool things to review and maybe have interview programs and all these cool things. That would be fun if I had the budget. But here's the thing, you know, one person could give me a few thousand bucks <laughs> and they'd, they'd, they'd go, yeah, right. Or... Every person who watches could give one buck and we'd have the finances to do all these cool things. How neat is that? So I'm asking you to become a patron of the drbill.tv show. Now all you got to do is go to the Dr. Bill TV site, drbill.tv, as it says there on the screen. And all you got to do is go there and at the very top, there's a thing that says support our videos on Patreon. You click that and then you can become a supporter. And I encourage you to become a supporter because it would allow us to do a whole lot more with the show. Expand it. Expand your mind. <laughs> yes. At least expand our budget to do these shows. So anyway, I think it's a great idea. Hopefully you do too. And even if it's just a buck per show, hey, that's a couple bucks a week or a couple bucks, well, actually it would be $4 a month. I got it. I figured it out. <laughs> $4 a month because it would be every show, every time there's a show produced, it would come out of your credit card or whatever for a dollar. Minimum, right? If you want to do $3, great, perfect, wonderful. If you could do $10, that'd be even better. <laughs> but you get the idea. So the idea is to be a patron of the arts. You say, you're an artist? Yes, actually I am. Trained, official, degreed. I have a BFA, Bachelor of Fine Arts in Studio Art, painting, printmaking, photography. But that has nothing to do with what we're doing here. <laughs> Other than the fact that I also got some experience with television production. But none of that matters. The point is, you'd be a patron of the show 
so that we can continue to do cooler and cooler shows. All right? Cool. So think about it. Tell your friends. Yes. I can see it now. Hey, friend, you need to give Dr. Bill a buck a show. What? <laughs> well, hey, they might go, okay. <laughs> you never know. So think about it. Okay, that's it for this week. Remember, until next time, that the doctor is out of here. Dr. Bill the Computer Curmudgeon is a production of DrBillBailey.net with all the honors, rights, and privileges thereunto appertaining.